Hello lads, hope you're well. Today I wanted to talk about an inconvenient truth for men. And this is something that you've probably seen flying around on the internet, especially if you're someone who sort of follows all the manosphere, red pill, whatever you want to call it, type of vlogs. Um, I know uh, someone like Andrew Tate and people like that have become quite famous recently because they've got very controversial opinions on things like this and, and everything like that. Um, but this is an area that I've followed for quite a while and I've read quite a lot of books. I know, I know I've mentioned these sorts of books on the channel before in terms of what I've read around this sorts of area. Um, but yeah, it's something that doesn't really get talked about that often. It's something that, yeah, it's inconvenient, but it is a truth and it is a fact. That fact is that men are only as valuable as what they bring to the table. Now, that may sound like a really obvious statement. Um, obviously, everyone's only as valuable as what they bring to the table in a certain extent. Um, but what I want to dig down into is what this actually means um, in terms of, in the aspects of sort of life, work, relationships, everything like that. Because that statement means different things to different people. And I think the way people misunderstand that statement or, or don't take it the right way is sort of what ends up getting a lot of men down. When most people, guys, hear that statement, the thing they'll come back with is, oh, what, so I have to be really rich, or oh, what, I have to be a, a supermodel, or oh, I have to, I don't know, I have to be good at everything, I have to be a professional athlete, or oh, what, so no one will like me if I'm just normal, and like, those are just silly responses, in my opinion. Like, I understand why people do think them, but that's not that's not what it means at all. Um, like, you, you you'd have friends as a bloke. You'd have friends that aren't yeah super rich, lawyers, whatever, blah blah blah. Like, I'm not saying that that you have to be at that extreme end to bring any value to the table. But equally, I'd like to hope you don't have a friend who just sort of does nothing with their life, adds nothing to the friendship group and sort of when he comes on a night out you're almost a bit like what are you doing here? Like you wouldn't have a friend like that either. So providing value and bringing value to the table doesn't mean that you have to provide everything but it means that you have to provide something. I'll start off by talking about it in terms of friendship groups rather than dating. We'll go on to like dating in a minute but I think friendship groups um, is 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 more important. Um, I'll always I'll always stand by the fact that it doesn't matter who you're married to or whatever. If you haven't got a good set of mates, you're never going to be particularly happy, in my opinion. Um, so in terms of bringing stuff to the friendship group, like I said, like I'm not saying all your mates are going to be sort of superstar high performers or anything like that. But at the same time, they're your friends for a reason. Like you you get on with them for a reason. Like there's I'm sure you've met hundreds, maybe thousands of men that you've been like, yeah, they're a nice guy, they're cool, whatever, but they're, they're not your mate. They don't they don't sort of provide any value to you. Um, that, again, that doesn't have to be, like, I'm not talking about monetary value. Like, they don't have to be able to do a specific skill or anything amazing. I'm not talking in that sort of, but, but when you, when you go out with your friends, like, a lot of people have their sort of role in the group. They, they all bring something to the group. You've sort of got maybe you've got the organizer or you've got the, the the class clown you've got the you've got the Casanova you've got the guy who who always does this something stupid on a night out who, who makes everyone laugh but you built that bond through sort of all all being yourselves like in my group I don't, I don't really know what I'd classify myself I'm probably probably closer to the guy who does something stupid on a night out than anyone else. Like, I'm the one who, as soon as he's has a, had a beer, has absolutely no filter on, on what he says. I'm also a pretty decent organiser. Like, I'm, I'm always happy to, to put a night out together. But if I sort of turned up one day and tried to play a role in the group or something like that that has never been what I've done before, my mates would be like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Like, that's... like. Would, like you're you're our mate. You don't need to start doing all this all this other stuff. But likewise, if I just started turning up to nights out, sitting there saying nothing, not talking to anyone, drinking tap water all night, it's be like, why did you come? Like, but, but you're you're adding absolutely no value to this friendship group. Even if it wasn't a night out, even if we just met up when when I kicked a football around or threw a rugby ball around at the park or just went for a coffee and had a catch up, 
if I just sat there and didn't say anything, they'd be a bit like, well, what, what, what was the point in you coming? You add absolutely no value to the friendship group. Like, men just aren't like that. Men, realistically, aren't going to be like, what? What's up? Like, like they're not going to often try and drag you and get you in involved. If you want to be involved, you have to push yourself forward and get get involved in what's going on. Now, to bring it to dating, look, um, this isn't a dating YouTube channel. I'm not like a dating coach or anything like that, obviously. But I I do have my opinions on these things, and basically, this YouTube channel is just a long list of of all my opinions on different topics, which is what most people's YouTube channels are, I guess. And I think the reason it's so clear in dating is because you can completely tell the difference between people who understand this this fact of you need to bring something to the table as a man to have any value or not. But I think what's really interesting when it comes to dating is very often men um, conflate their value in a dating market with who they are as a human being like you'll get a lot of guys who if they're really struggling with women they'll just think there's something fundamentally wrong with them as a person they'll think oh like oh, yeah, i'm just i'm just i'm just not worth anything as a bloke which obviously isn't true at all like if if you're happy being single and you've got your own thing going on of course of course you're just as valuable as anyone else whether whether you're dating or not but and i think that's why a lot of guys take it so personally um, when they when they get rejected and things like that, or when they get dumped, they see it as an attack on them as a person rather than their partner just didn't fancy them anymore, or their partner didn't didn't get the value from them that they that they wanted. Like again, a lot of men will sort of go to this. Oh, so what? I have to be really rich. Oh yeah, I have to have loads of money. I have to be gorgeous or anything like that to, to stand any chance it's like no obviously not if you meet the right person and connect with them and they like you for who you are as a person that's obviously going to go a lot longer a lot further than anything else but again at the same time if you're dating someone and you're maybe i don't know at the stage of life where you where she wants to get married and have children you're sort of feeling the same way realistically you're going to have to bring a lot to the table for that for that to happen like if, if if you want that person to stick around, it is absolutely delusional to say that you can be unemployed, no ambition, still living at home, going yeah, but I want to be married with a couple of kids in the next three years. <laughs> that, that's you're you're not going to find someone that wants to start a family with you if you're in that state. And likewise, if you did, they're probably not the right person because that would be in my opinion, incredibly irresponsible to start a family if you were in that state. I think one of the huge problems that have come from sort of the, in, the social media and the internet age and everything like that is, and the delivery services and whatever, no one needs to know how to do anything. Like how many, how many guys know how to do the basics of DIY? Like, or would you be, like would you even have to call your mate or call your dad to put stuff together? I know I, know I would. To be honest, I, it's something that it's something that I'm really trying to work on at the moment. But I'm incredibly lucky that my dad's um, DIY handy person. That's that's what he that's what he did for a living, and he has built. I would genuinely say probably a third of our house. And if he hadn't, and he and I had a different dad, we either would have spent tens of thousands on the house more than we have, or our house just wouldn't be as nice as it is now. And that is because he brings a lot of value to the table in that area. And it's little things like when I need to move back to uni, my car isn't bringing enough to take my stuff down there. My dad has got a car there. But if, if something happened tomorrow and I didn't have that anymore, I'd be in trouble. So that's where you've got to go, okay, as a person, what do you bring to the table? That's why when it comes to your career as well, it's so important to play, play to your strengths. Obviously, I'd love to be a lawyer or an investment banker making a million pounds a day. I am terrible at reading and I'm not great at maths and I don't survive on much sleep. So I would never last in a law firm or an investment bank or a hedge fund. My strength is, in my opinion, that I'm good at connecting with people, I'm good at speaking with people, and I have a genuine interest in coaching people and men and everything like that to get better. So that's why I've headed down the 
the psychology and therapy route because I think that's where my strength lays and that's where I'm going to be able to bring value. The final area that I give this example in is your job. Um, again, I always briefly touched on career there, but if you turn up to a job interview with just a blank piece of paper as your CV, they're going to go, well, why should we hire you? you? You bring nothing to the table. Whereas if you can show up and you go, I've done this, this and this, I'm trained in this, this and this, I have a decent knowledge around this X, Y and Z. So if your company needs someone who can do that specific thing, I'm your guy. And that's that. That's really that's a metaphor that has really helped me, um, like see see where where it's coming from. Because for what I do for a living, that's literally my job. My company will say we need someone who can do this, this, and this, and it'll be my job to go and find a person who has that on their CV. And that again sort of brings home the value of having something to bring to the table. As I always say, I don't want to draw home the point too much. I know I do tend to go in circles, so look, I'll leave it there. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. If you did appreciate any of this, please do consider liking and subscribing if you got any value from it. There we are, using some terminology. Um, yeah, comment any other advice you have below as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care, lads.